When we think of whistleblowers, we think of the good guys, the ones who have the courage to bring down rogue companies and expose corruption within government agencies. But just like in the movies, the good guy doesn't always win. According to a recent study, more than one in five employees who have reported workplace misconduct said they experienced some form of retaliation. Not necessarily encouraging statistics that we're hearing. And Sharon, I mean, you're one of the most famous whistleblowers. You were on the cover of Time Magazine as one of the, the, the people of the year. I think we have the cover that we can show. Uh, but walk us through when you finally got to the point where you wanted to leak out this information and, and, and tell us about your experience from then on. I ran across fraud in the summer of 2001. I met with Enron CEO Ken Lay, really as a result of Jeff Skilling, our CEO, abruptly resigning. Um, in August of 2001. So new leadership was coming in place. I felt optimistic that maybe I could deliver bad news to the CEO's office. Um, the, the thing that surprised me was the, the pressures in place to not hear bad news. And I really think that was a, a cultural issue that caused Enron to um, um, really ignore the looming crisis. How much have times changed since you blew the whistle on Enron? Are we looking at a totally different situation, you know, a few years later? Well, I think it's actually worse because um, since Ken Lai actually looked into having me fired, Congress put whistleblower protections in the Sorbanes-Oxley Act that was passed in July 2002. And if you look at corporate law firms, the kind of conferences they're offering um, CEOs is what to do with that problem whistleblower that you have hiding in your ranks. And as long as corporations look at the internal whistleblower as a threat, a problem, of course there's going to be retaliation. Well, and Kenneth, I mean, you've experienced retaliation firsthand. You've, you've experienced the effects ever since. Can you walk us through what you went through? Peanut Corp, of course, had shut, down, had shut down after I left. But even since then, I have been told in job interviews just simply because I was locally known that three times I've been told I was not given the job because they had seen me on television or on the internet or Googled me and they couldn't take the chance on hiring a whistleblower. And my last job, someone else was whistleblowing, but because I had the reputation for being a whistleblower, I was called into human resources, cross-examined, uh, practically cross-examined harassed, transferred to a different department, and then they shut the department down, even though I wasn't the one blowing the whistle. And Kenneth, you're still looking for a job, right? Yes, yes I am. You know, doing things like this doesn't help, but he's still gotta get the message out there. But locally, I'm as blackballed as you can get. Well, and when you look back, I mean, do you regret spilling the beans or are you glad that you did it? Well, in my situation, I mean, we weren't even dealing with so much financial. Peanut Corp was a company killing people. So I couldn't sleep at night not saying anything. So of course, I don't regret doing it because what choice do you have when lives are at stake? 